This is the eighty-fourth creation. The memory of these eighty-four creations are still there in your body. If you do not cleanse that, you… this memory will bind you. Based on this eighty-four asanas, one asana is all that's needed. You just have to master that. All these practices, any yogi practice for that matter, is rooted in a fundamental system called the Bhuta Shuddhi. It's called the Bhuta Shuddhi. Bhuta Shuddhi essentially means to cleanse the elements in your system. There are five elements, but there are only four which need to be cleansed. The fifth one, you know what the elements are – earth, water, wind, fire and space. There is no cleaning to be done with the space. It is only these four which need to be attended to. Your body is a play of these five elements. The earth is a play of these five elements. The whole creation is a play of these five elements. So the yogic system essentially is about handling the elements right. If these four or five elements behave well within the system, everything about you will be fine. Seventy-two percent of your body is actually water, you know. Another twelve percent is earth. Another six percent is air. Another four percent is fire. The remaining is space. This is how the body is constructed. So for these elements, there are different types of sadhanas for all the four elements and for the fifth one too, to influence it, not to cleanse it. So if you do sufficient bhuta shuddhi, that is if you cleanse these elements substantially, then you attain your state called bhuta siddhi, that means you have mastery over these five elements. If the water in you behaved well, if the water within you turns sweet, you would be very sweet, seventy-two percent at least sweet. If you work with earth, another twelve percent turns sweet, eighty-four percent. If you do the air, which is very easy to do, six percent, ninety percent. The fire, you're living in society, you're also married, you need little fire. You need to burn somebody a little bit. So four percent fire will leave it. The remaining six percent is space. Only when you want to do Bhuta Siddhi, it becomes relevant. For Bhuta Shuddhi, it is not relevant. Eighty-four is a significant number in the way the creation is right now. Now, if, uh, you don't have to believe this, but this is our inner experience. In our experience, this is the eighty-fourth creation. Eighty-three times it's happened and demolished itself. This is the eighty-fourth time. It will happen for one hundred and twelve times. And the final one that happens will not be physical in nature. So it is based on this that you have one hundred and twelve chakras and eighty-four are the most important and there are eighty-four asanas in yoga. The basic asanas are eighty-four in number because when you want to do bhuta shuddhi, you want to cleanse the elements. What are you cleansing it off is the previous memory. If you look deep into the system, 
you will see the memory of everything, the way this existence happened is right here. If it was not here, certain things could not have been said in the past before all this modern science is talking about these things. For example, have you heard, heard of Paul Steinhardt? Paul Steinhardt wrote a book which became very famous in the last three years or so. This book is called as The Endless Universe. Till recently, modern science believed that universes began somewhere and it ends somewhere. For the first time, they're putting out a theory saying it's endless. Always in the yogic system, we've been saying, the cosmos is ever expanding. Have you seen the symbol, the saligram symbol? That is the symbol of an ever expanding cosmos. So, he went through this and I… you know, I've been in conversation with him for some time for last few years and uh, he had… Pres he was presenting a computer simulated images of how the Big Bang happened. And I asked him, he said there's more than one bang. Many things have been said in the yogic system as to how this is the eighty-fourth. There are many, many symbols or there are many, many uh, aspects in the body which clearly say that the memory of these eighty-four creations are still there in your body. It is there in every atom in the existence. So what you're trying to cleanse is, you want to cleanse it from the memory because this memory binds you. This memory gives you a sense of belonging. At the same time, this memory binds you, it doesn't let you go. Say so whether you like it or you don't like it, your great-grandfather who died long time ago, he's right now living through you in some way, at least in the shape of your nose, the way you think, the way you sit, the way you stand, isn't he? Yes or no? You might have thought you buried him, but he's popped up inside of you and living. If you look deep enough, the memory goes way back. If you want to evolve, you have to cleanse yourself of the memory which is imprinted on the elements in your system. If the elements do not lose their memory, they will not behave the way you want, they will keep on repeating the old cycles. You may think your forefathers are dead, no, those guys are living through you. You know, Jesus said, leave the dead to the dead. This is the reason when somebody takes sannyas, the first thing that we do is, they do karmas to their own their parents who are still living. The intention is not that they should die. The intention is you want to cleanse your memory. You don't want to be influ influenced by your genetics because if you're influenced by your genetics, you'll just become a cyclical process. You will not go anywhere. You'll… you'll be going in circles thinking you're going somewhere. So one level is on the chemistry, the genetics. Another level, the deeper level is on the elemental level. We want to cleanse that. If you do not cleanse that, you… this memory will bind you, the memory will make you go in circles. Based on this eighty-four asanas, eighty-four creations, all these things are connected. You don't have to go by that. Anyway, because of this eighty-four, out of this eighty-four asanas that are created, these eighty-four when we say eighty-four asanas, do not think of them as just eighty-four postures. These are eighty-four systems of attaining. A yogi masters only one asana, he does not practice eighty-four or six hundred as people are doing. In America, they come and tell me, I am doing three hundred and twenty asanas. <laughs> I said, what for? <laughs> Every idiot is doing thousands of asanas, whichever way they sit, it's an asana only. One asana is all that's needed, you just have to master that. So eighty-four ways to attain, this is what eighty-four asanas are. And these eighty-four are pertaining to the four elements, twenty-one each. There are many other aspects to this, but uh, it will… Without a certain dimension of experience within you, I will be taking you into belief, which I don't want to do.